All right. So you're ready to start? We'll just start talking. We'll call it an interview and we'll just start talking. Yeah, great. Does that work for you? What are you wearing around your neck? Oh, this is uh, this is uh, called a Uyamik uh, necklace. Um, and uh, my cousin, Boyap, John Chase made this uh, for me. Um, it's it's representing walrus. We call it Azvuk, is a walrus, and it's representing that. And it's actually walrus tusk, and it's a walrus he hunted. He he, he lives up in Kotzebue now. Um, he's he's up in Inupiaq country, but you know we're originally from southwestern Alaska. Uh, we both grew up in a in Bethel, uh, in Montreal, but uh, he married a Inupiaq girl um, from up in Kikitagorok, is what it's called. Uh, Katsubu, uh, but he moved up to Kikitagoro probably about, must be about 10 years ago now, and he's just in that hunter's mecca up there, you know, there's there's walrus and seal and caribou and whale, I mean, everything you can think of as a hunter and provider, so he, you know, we grew up in that life, so he's just so happy over there, because, you know, to do that, to hunt seal and walrus and all those things like that growing up, we had to go pretty far, right? Uh, cause we lived, you know, about 60, 60 miles up the Cuscombe river. So we had to go really far to get to anywhere where there's seals and, and whatnot, but he's, he's living a life, living a dream. Yeah, it's beautiful. Well, I've only been to Alaska a couple of times and it was so um, astounding to me, you know, flying in the float planes and looking over the YK Delta, I yeah. mean, you see all that water and all that land. Yeah. And it, it was so large and so enormous. I'd never seen anything like it. <laughs> yeah, it's a massive state. It's a massive. Uh, there's so much. There's so much to see. A lot of people come up and you know they they travel to Alaska, but uh, you know usually go down to uh, you know they usually go through the inside passage. You know Juno, where I'm at now, where all the cruise ships go, and then maybe. Um, dock at Whittier and then take the train to what to um to Anchorage and then maybe uh, up to uh you know Denali and so that's usually what people see that's a kind of this road system we call it the rail belt um and you know well over half the people live on the on the rail belt most of them living in Anchorage but uh once you get away you know like you like you did you know flying into the rural parts of Alaska that's when you really see the the special um, uniqueness of of our home and the you know the indigenous population and really a glimpse of like a glimpse of of what it was for us as Inuit people or Tlingit people or Unangan or Inupiaq um, what what life was like because you know it's just a generation ago um, uh, you know my mom's generation. Um, is that you know generation that kind of lived that last bit of life before you know the huge change of becoming part of america you know she's older than alaska you know the state of alaska i mean it only became a state in 50 something 57. um but uh yeah so um yeah it's it's a really special and unique place and uh and uh, and not many people get a chance to experience it um because you know it's not built for tourism and all that you know, so not too many visitors, outside visitors go unless you have some kind of business to get there. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you're in the school, you know, a school business or some kind of, uh, you know, state or federal project or something like that. There's not too many people go, you know. that are you, raised, you were raised in a traditional life? Yeah, we, you know, we grew up, um, we grew up very traditional. Yeah. Um, you know, we grew up um, pretty much in the time when things, you know, there was no, there was no television. There was like one station, KYUK, uh, or it's, it was actually called Ratnet, Rural Alaska Television. And it was one station and not everyone had a, a TV. And and so it was like, you know, we, we were out in nature all the time. We were always hunting and fishing and, and playing out in the, in the nature and, and, um, you know, hearing traditional stories and doing the thing where everybody had those roles of like, you know, what everybody in the family had a role in it to play, uh, no matter who you were from kids to, 
to, to adults. So, uh, you know, we work really um, hard together to be able to, to persist uh, in, in, you know, such a remote place in a harsh environment.